Freya is the newest major god for the Norse pantheon. He's the only major god to be added to the original pantheons since the release over 20 years ago. He also has access to three brand new minor gods, Ula, Aegir, and Vidar. Let's take a look at them all. Who is Freya? Freya is the Norse god of fertility and kingship, and in AOM he focuses on technology and defense. Normally the Norse gods are played quite aggressively, mainly Loki but somewhat the other two as well. Although Odin and Thor can both do a late game Ragnarok, which involves playing somewhat defensive. But for the most part they're known for their classical fighting. So what does Freya have that makes him so defensive? Freya's god power is Gullum Bursty. The boar Gullum Bursty can be summoned at one of your town centers to defend it and it lasts for a short amount of time. Imagine a mercenary cavalry and a battle boar mixed together, that is the god power, and it gets stronger with every age. So you basically want to force it out of the enemy Freya as soon as possible. In the late game, if you use it in the mythic age, it has a ridiculous amount of attack, and if you use it on a front town center, then you can kind of use it aggressively. But how it works as a defensive god power is the further away it walks from the town center, the slower it is. So it isn't like you're gonna be getting a second town center forward early on and then be able to put it in your opponent's base, or not very often anyway. This boar is incredibly strong though, and I think it's gonna be one of the things which makes Freya very broken. <laughs> Freya's unique tech is Freya's gift. It's an incredibly expensive technology, which gets cheaper as you research more technologies. It gives human soldiers and heroes plus 25% hit points. This is another thing which makes Freya defensive, because during the late game, you're going to have this upgrade and you want to get there as soon as possible to have plus 25% hit points. To put it into context, champion line upgrades are plus 30% hit points. So this is a massive deal. It's basically another major upgrade. But what are Freya's bonuses? Freya has minus 50% cost on all technologies, but they take 150% longer to research. So to put this into some context, if we take an upgrade like Thundering Hooves for Freya with an A, <laughs> normally for Thor and Odin, this costs 150 food and takes 40 seconds. But for Freya with an R, it costs 75 food and takes 100 seconds. So you're really getting a good discount, but it takes so much longer. Freya, gatherers and dwarves can repair buildings. Along with that, repairing buildings is also free. Again, everything feeding into this, he is defensive, Freya is defensive, and let's give him all these defensive things. I can't imagine this one being that busted, but it's just a nice quality of life thing to have for somebody that's a defensive character. Freya, hill forts and hill fort units do 10% more damage. The hillfort's doing more damage is obviously more defensive, but also the hillfort unit's dealing more damage. I would expect a defensive one to maybe have more hit points to defend easier, but maybe it's to transition out of that defensive stage to then attacking later. But 10% extra damage on your husk goals is uh, pretty good. I'm sure we are going to see Freya players getting quite aggressive, but all of these things mixed together does make him somewhat one-dimensional, wanting to be this defensive powerhouse. Now let's take a look at the three minor gods. In the classical age, it's Ula. Ula's god power is an Asgardian bastion, which is essentially a frosty hill fort that builds itself, but it builds faster if you have infantry units building it as well. In the classical age, without anything building it, it takes an incredibly long time, and then if you have one infantry unit, it does speed it up significantly, but it still takes a while. It does build itself faster in later ages, but I can't imagine a situation where you wouldn't want to drop it down in the classical age. Who wouldn't want a hill fort in the classical age and being the only god that's able to do that? This can be great for putting on a gold mine to protect yourself or maybe a forward hunt spot or any highly contested area or even dropping it next to a town center. If you want to grab a vast second town center and then put the Asgardian bastion next to it, put one unit on that, rest of them on the town center. I can imagine that being a pretty good play. And then once the town center's up, you could always drop Gullum Bursty if someone's coming, coming along with an army, so sounds like a pretty good combo to me. The myth unit for Ula is called the Draugr. The Draugr just looks like a better troll with a better special attack, even though the troll special attack is pretty good now. But the Draugr, when he shoots his arrows, it pierces all units that it's attacking. So if you come at him in, in a big long line, then it's going to do some serious damage. I guess they just wanted Freya to have another defensive option. An archer myth unit is definitely the way to go about this, but it does look very strong. The special attack sends arrows out in three directions, so if you get quite a few of them, you can really take out an army pretty quickly. The first tech is an upgrade for the Draugr to give it more damage and range. Plus five range on any archer is going to be a very strong technology. If you've got a few Draugrs, it's definitely worth it. Servants of Glory gives 5% extra speed to longhouse units and an extra short burst after being idle. 
which I think is a pretty cool concept. I really like the upgrades that give a little something extra rather than just raw stats. Although as far as raw stats go, speed is the best stat in the game. So plus 5% is uh, pretty good. And I'm not sure how impactful the short burst after being idle is rather than just being something a bit different. Ring Oath. This is a technology to make the cast of your Asgardian Bastion hill fort slightly cheaper. So it goes from being 100 favor to being 40, but the upgrade costs 10 favor. So you're basically getting it for half price. Depending on how much you've been fighting, maybe this is a good upgrade, uh, but it's hard to tell this early on. Now the last upgrade gives you access to portable rams in the classical age, basically just allowing you to sit there, be however many town centers, couple of bastions down, stay in the classical age and get husk goals and portable rams in the classical age. And it gives you minus 20% build time, which is basically a levy upgrade. The new heroic age god is Aegir. Aegir's god power is Tempest, a hailstorm that slows enemy units speed and attack speed in a large area. This has some great potential mixed with Gullen Bursty, Freya's main god power. If you're going for something like a fast heroic and then the enemy comes and attacks you, you can slow them down and then send Gullen Bursty onto them basically making them not be able to leave and have an unkillable boar running at them. It also links well with Vidar's god power, which is coming up in a second. His myth unit is the Rock Giant. The Rock Giant is a super tanky giant with a taunt ability. This taunt ability will direct all damage within an area to itself for a short amount of time. I can imagine if you get a few Rock Giants together and then some throwing axemen, for example, something that's really frail, then you can get everything to target the big rock giants while you take everything else out. I can imagine this one being extremely strong. Now for the techs. Of course, there's a rock giant upgrade. So this allows rock giants to eat buildings and restore health. So imagine pretty similar to a Colossus where the Colossus eats gold mines, but this guy will be able to eat the enemy buildings. While it doesn't do that much damage to the buildings, it's just the fact it's getting health back and it's a taunt high HP character. Beasts of Renown. So this enables healing around your town center and the hill forts, and a food trickle for each. Which seems like a bit of a weird upgrade, but I guess if you want to be defensive, you want all the food and extra healing. But it's nowhere near as good as something like a healing spring. Another upgrade is heroes and siege weapons are 10% faster and do 20% more damage. This mix with some later technologies could actually be really strong, because Vidar has a strong hero damage increase as well. And the last upgrade is one that, that summons Krakens next to your dragon ships. This is on a very large cooldown, but anything which summons a very strong myth unit is, uh, is going to be a good upgrade. So I can see why it's on a really strong cooldown. Now onto Vidar. This is the Mythic Age God. Inferno. Inferno is the new god power for Vidar. It is a destructive god power. So think similar to a meteor or a lightning storm. This god power can be targeted in a certain direction and it sends Fenrir in flame form towards the targeter, damaging anything in its path and then it explodes right at the end for huge damage. I love having more destructive god powers and it's something that Norse hasn't ha ever had access to before, although it does look very strong right now, but all the huge god powers do feel a bit broken anyway. So in a world where everything's broken, nothing is, which is always the core belief of Age of Mythology. Speaking of broken, the myth unit is Fafnir. Fafnir is a huge dragon that breathes fire and has a gas cloud surrounding it which deals damage in AoE. Although up front Fafnir might seem incredibly strong, and it is, the slayer of Fafnir actually gains 300 gold. So if you massed these and you say you sent three in, and they all died, your opponent would get 900 gold. I do kind of like the concept for this, but if you are incredibly far ahead and you get this very tanky, high damage unit in, it could be slightly too strong, but we'll have to see. Vidar has some really strong technologies. The first one is Twilight of the Gods, which gives 10% human soldier hit points, which is quite straightforward, but then it also says adds extra damage versus heroes. So I'll have to see what that's about, because that's a bit strange. But the 10% soldier hit points is obviously very good, especially if you're adding it on to the 25% that Freya gets anyway, with his upgrade from earlier. Avenging Spirit. Avenging Spirit gives hearses more damage for how much damage they do. Think similar to how a Hydra works, where it gets more heads for more damage than it does. Hearses go up in damage from being getting 20% extra damage for 50 damage dealt, 40% extra for 150 damage dealt, or 60% extra for 300 damage dealt. And you can see this by how big their hammers get. So I've seen one compared to the original Urza and they just have a comically large hammer. 
So it's easy to tell which one has this upgrade and which one you want to target down, or from the player's perspective, which one you want to stick on an enemy myth unit. Silent Resolve. It increases idle damage for Berserks. A bit of a strange upgrade. Basically, you need to leave a few in your base or hanging around to attack later, but maybe it could be an interesting thing. I guess just again, just plays into this defensive role. Maybe this is too many things that are going in, in the defensive direction. Could also be strong if you're just waiting to attack. The longer your opponent waits, the better it is for you. Maybe that's the way. The last upgrade is Fury of the Fallen. Berserk is going to temporary damage boost whenever a military unit falls nearby. It's 15% and it stacks. Huge Berserk or Ulfsark armies could be insanely strong. I also just deleted a handful to see what would happen to the attack and the attack goes up crazy, but it doesn't seem to last very long. Just from my experience so far, it seems like Freya has the potential to be very, very strong, but mainly in that defensive light. I can imagine a world where you could play aggressive with him, get a forward second town center and do some Gullum Bursty shenanigans, or just go pull out aggression and then deal some damage early and then turtle for later. But we'll have to see how he's played. It's really cool to see a new god added to one of the original pantheons. I'd love to see it for Greeks, Egyptians and Atlanteans, but we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, see you on the next one.